What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of you for the Rising of the Shield Hero Season 2. This is Episode 8, and with me, as always, I have Loose Pit. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, this episode was pretty interesting um, in both its world building and uh, like like how, how they're trying to move like move around with certain plot points uh, uh, when they, you know, in well, I'll get to that later. But any, anyway, um, well, we, we do we do learn a little bit more about the new world that uh, now Fumi and the others ha- have uh, gotten into. And it's pretty much like 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 we you know said before, it's pretty much reminiscent of like feudal Japan in, in several ways. Like, um, you know, the mm-hmm. architecture is pretty similar, similar. The, you know, the currency is like similar to like, how, um, you know, like the old the old like currency as, you know, Japan were. Um, so uh, but yeah, so mo- most of their time is like they they're trying to build up some amount of experience and, and some money just to get to the next uh, next town, some like somewhere in the country. Uh, so it's I, f- I felt like most of it was them just trying to get money. Yeah, um, like they were. I mean, I kind of thought they were going to be like we were kind of going to get like a montage of them like leveling up again or something. But it, it was more them trying to uh, actually just earn money by selling things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like now Fumi becomes basically like a traveling merchant, uh, and he, I uh, basically like uh, we learned that the um, uh, the type of race like that glass is like is some kind of a uh, what was it like a spirit or something like that? Yeah, and a, they a spir- a spirit. They need they basically need to have these uh, uh, like mana replenishment potions or something to reju- uh, rejuvenate themselves. Um, so now Fumi decides to uh, sell a lot of these like these potions to uh, earn enough, to, you know, to just continue to earn money, basically. Well, te- um, technically, it's and- it's it's all the material that he already has with him uh, at the moment. Yeah, like he just, uh, I think he just like crafts them and then ends up selling them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so and, and of course, like his his tactics were pretty shrewd in a way because he mostly just uh, <laughs> sold. All the stuff that he had at the time and then he does it again at an auction but he he kind of fakes out like uh in, in like in the first part because i'm, I'm guessing like what, what what he was doing is like he was selling like uh like what it appears to be a crate full of these potions but we find out that mm-hmm. um that it, like they blatantly sabotaged the auction um by having Rishia ac- like to, like quote unquote accidentally trip and break them all, and then supposedly they find like the last potion to auction off so- shortly afterwards. Yeah, I was kind of <laughs> I was kind of surprised that Naofumi kind of uses some somewhat underhanded tactics as a salesman uh, to you know try, <laughs> you know kind of to get to get money basically. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not um, it's not really the most heroish thing that he can really do. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, in his line of work, but it's like it's I mean, it's well, it's it's pretty much what he's done like even back in the first season when you know, he uh, back, back like when he had no money, his reputation's been shot at the time. So he had to use like a lot of these tactics just to, you know, gain a lot of favors and money. You know, just to get the, mm-hmm. just to get enough money to, you know, pay off for food, you know, equipment, gain some XP, uh, uh, at certain, at certain points. So that's yeah, yeah, that's pretty much like majority of this episode, uh, pretty much was until we get to the last scene in which they're trying to infiltrate the castle in which they have to. Well, uh, well yeah, yeah. And, and of course we also see like the, uh, I guess one of the villains of this arc, um. I, I, at first, I wasn't sure if this was just Kyo in another body or something like that, but it was—it's just somebody, I guess, that works with him. Um, and uh, he's—I uh, I guess he's like holed up in this castle that they need to uh, infiltrate, and I guess you know try to confront him. Uh, the thing that kind of confused me too was that uh, I, as far as I know, they're—I I think they're all still level one, right? Like I didn't see them grind or anything like that or try to level up. Uh, I so I thought it was kind of like, I don't know, unless they're just, they just, something happened off screen. Like, um, I, I thought it was kind of ridiculous. That they're like raiding this, this castle and they're still like kind of, uh, you would think at least they'd be like uh, under leveled. Right. I mean, like, I don't know. I was just kind of assuming that considering this seemed like a pretty, uh, 
you know, like a like it would be like a, if, if it were like a video game, this would be like a high level area or something you may would maybe you would need to actually grind for yeah. it before you actually like got to it. Yeah. And um, it's, it's and also the fact that Raftali is not not in her adult form at, uh, at this point. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I, I'm kind of surprised how she's able to just handle that weapon. I think, you know, they established it was kind of heavy for her before. Uh, but she seems to kind of be using it pretty effortlessly for the most part. Here. Well, I think she, um, she's mo she's or, mostly using like a new a brand new the dagger. Uh, I think or, it's I I think it was a, it's a Koda Kodachi or something. It's it's a it's a uh, short it's a short katana of some kind. But it, yeah, it's it's, I, it's a kind of weapon that she's using because she can't use a. Uh, her previous sword because she can't wield it properly just due uh, just due to her you know small stature at, uh, at this time yeah i i just felt like it's like it would have made more sense if she was maybe at a bit of a higher level with the with everything she was doing and uh, when they raided this castle uh, she was kind of acting like i guess the tank in a way mm -hmm. uh and just taking out all these guys well i <sighs> I suppose that there could be another reason, reason because they said, I think in the beginning of the episode, they mentioned that they only, uh, at the beginning of the episode, they only had like 10 days left before the next wave uh, in that world mm. comes around. So, so I'm guessing like they didn't have enough time uh, to level up while, while they were like, you know, trying to make money in the town that they were in. Yeah. Um... I don't know. I guess, I guess it would have, like, to me, it just would have made more sense if they actually had leveled up. Mm -hmm. like, um, because, like, I, I just can't buy that they're able to uh, uh, fight on at an equal level uh, with the uh, all the guys that are fighting in this uh, in this castle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, but <laughs> suppose, like, somehow they managed to, you know, supposedly, like, get, get by all the guards, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Like I don't know, pretty handily in, in a way, but we we don't even know like how 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 high of a level these guards are, unless like they they're not high level as we think they might be. But it's just when they yeah. they reach the the dragon hourglass, uh, when they run into like what, what was it that uh, I I I, I can't remember that. Yeah, I name. completely forgot what his name was. Yeah, um, but <laughs> he he's i i feel like he he almost could just be kyo based on the way he acts like he's just pretty much just almost exactly the same personality wise um and especially as a villain like i i think at one point he said like his whole or no 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 um i think we actually do hear kyo speaking um yeah at one point don't we at, at yeah like uh, uh yeah uh <laughs> he said like uh his whole goal is basically just to see and <laughs> just uh to see uh, Naofumi, like, uh, and Naofumi's face contort in despair or something like that. And it just sounded like the most cliche villain line I think he could have said. Uh, yeah. I, I, I seriously, like, that. that's probably, like, one of the, my biggest problems with season two is just I, I can't take, I cannot take him seriously at all. Uh, I, I don't know. Some Somebody did mention, I remember, like, he, there is kind of a reason why he's acting this way, or maybe there's, like, a... Uh, something at some point his his uh, character gets developed more I guess but as it is right now I can't I, I don't know I don't think he's a very good villain I <laughs> yeah. just think he comes off as very I, cliche and, I'm I'm starting to miss you know as much as I, I don't like her I like I'm starting to miss mine as as the villain because she was yeah established more as like, like you know the more believable villain uh the you know when we when we first saw her at, uh, at the beginning of season one but Kyo just like he he just comes out of nowhere, uh, like, you know, for, I don't know, for little to no reason. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, like, the only, you know, the only thing we know about Kyo is, like, he lives in the world that now Fumi's in right now. But we just don't know, like, a lot of his backstory, like, or what his goal is or what his relationship with, um, you know, with Lark and Glass and all that stuff. And we know that he's, uh, yeah. he's also, like, a... Uh, a vassal hero, you know, with I like with that book that he's that he carries around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we we don't really get too much about this guy who's working with him either. No, um, you know, he's just uh, he's just another villain. Um, like now, Fumi was going to fight him, but then they're like, uh, they end up opening up the portal with the dragon hourglass, and uh, uh, they were uh, they were going to try to get away, but. 
uh, Raftalia decides to stay behind. No, no, she doesn't uh, decide or, to stay behind. Well, it's just yeah. Kyo is preventing her from, you know, from be being teleported with Naofumi and the others. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so she just, because of that, she ends up uh, not, I guess, you know, not joining them, not going with them. Uh, so she, she, you know, she gets left behind there. Uh, and that's kind of where we end this episode. <laughs> I had, I, I, I'm just kind of, uh, for all the people that have read the source material, I was kind of wondering like what their reaction to this was, uh, because, you know, apparently Raptalia wasn't even supposed to be with Naofumi. Uh, so now that she's being like left behind, I'm kind of wondering where they're going to take, uh, what they're, what they're trying to, where they're trying to take her character, uh, like what they're going to do with her. Like, uh, apparently she was with, I guess, Glass and the others at this point in the story, in the source material. Yeah. So I, th uh, I thought it was an interesting way to, for them to write Raftalio off Naofumi's party uh, at this point uh -huh. of the story. Like, even though that, like, technically that she wasn't supposed to be with Naofumi, uh, while, you know, during the light, light novel part. But, you know, I, I you know, mm. it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to, like, you know, like you said, like, I'm curious as to, like, if, uh, if at this point of the story that Raftalia is going to end up running into Lark and Glass, uh, quite possibly they, they they might be the ones that end up saving her. Uh, you know, while, while she's being out, you know obviously being outnumbered by you know all the guards in the castle. Um, yeah, I mean they need to find a way to reintroduce Lark and uh, his group as well. So I mean that might be how they do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we know from the Spirit Tortoise arc, they. Pretty much what they did with the other heroes, they, they you know, in a, uh, by uh, to uh, I guess introduce them within the or uh, the spirit tortoise arc or reintroduce them was to just have them lie, you know, imprisoned. Uh, so that I mean, that was different. So I don't know, maybe they'll do something uh, with uh, Lark and his group, uh, some kind of anime original thing where uh, where they show up just differently, I guess. Um, and uh, not to mention now, Fumi is is still looking for philo i don't know I, I would assume i guess philo was with them i'm not sure and the source material i'm i, I don't know but i'm kind of wondering where she is uh since you know they're still trying to find her yeah uh, it's 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 it, like the entire episode i think the last two episodes they spent most of the time wondering like where philo is all all this time maybe maybe she's she's mm. with lark in class possibly but yeah i I could see that kind of being the case because that's what I thought they would do uh, is they would just, just switch uh, Raftalia with Philo being with them instead. Um, so I, I could maybe see that happening uh, because, I mean, as we, we still don't know where she is anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really have too much to say about the episode. Like, I thought it was OK. Uh, it was uh, uh, like it was a little bit different because uh, we saw now Fumi trying to be like a, a merchant and uh, I, I thought what would have happened in this episode was that they were going to try to level up again or there would be like maybe a short montage of them leveling up. I still think they could have done that. Uh, they sh they could have at least had like maybe a few minutes just dedicated to them, like just showing them level up. So it was a, at least would have been a little bit more believable uh, when they raided that castle. I was kind of like thinking actually before they raided the castle, uh, like they were going to maybe say uh, make some passing remark about them being like too low level or something so maybe they would have to sneak into the castle like i think that would have that would have been interesting if maybe as a way to get around like the whole uh them being low level thing is that they would just like sneak in there and try to get past the guards or something but instead they just you know of course they just uh, raid the castle and actually like fight all the guards uh so I I don't know i was kind of I, like, a little bit surprised when that happened i mean uh, like the more believable excuse is possibly they don't have like an area for them to properly grind uh of sorts because uh, I, don't, I don't know i, I don't know yeah, how like how, how the world works or if there's like some kind of like a respawn thing the world uses but i i, I doubt it but it's, it's just i i just don't think like they <laughs> may, maybe it's possible they just never found an area that they could properly grind uh grind their levels maybe but it's mm -hmm. it's it's hard to say um well you know for yeah. whatever uh for whatever they're you know how, how they're trying to tell the story like uh, you know and of course the way they you know they wrote wrote off Rat raptalia from naofumi uh at this point in, in the anime so far yeah um 
Yeah, I, I don't know too much else to say about the episode. I, I don't know if you have anything else to say about it. It was an it was an interesting episode. Um, definitely like a you know a, a good episode uh, introducing properly introducing us to the world that Lark and Glass live in and uh, what kind of people uh, live there and you know supposedly you know of course inspired by feudal Japan. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm definitely looking forward to next week's episode and like how they're going to handle it now that. Uh, now that Rafa Tali is no longer with now for me, or if like they're gonna get like they're gonna have the episode mostly focused on Rafa Talia meeting up with Lark and Glass, because uh, for people that read the light novel at this point of the story, they said it uh, it diverges into two separate storylines. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering how they'll handle that in the anime. Um, I mean, it would kind of be a, it'd be a little bit weird to show like two things or show those two things at once. Well, I mean, I, I guess it could be done, but um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm kind of wondering how they'll do that. Yeah, considering that we only uh, have like what five more episodes for the season, it's. I mm-hmm. guess we could have an episode uh, that splits in between, like a, you know, the two party parties' perspectives. But I, I'm not sure like how they're going to handle it. Uh, you know, just through yeah. the, just through the fact like and how quickly. Uh, they adapted the spirit towards Stark in like what six episodes. Uh, so I mean, I guess depending on how long this particular arc is, I kind of wonder how much how quickly they're going to try to get through it, considering there's like what like five more episodes to go. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I don't know if they're gonna like try to rush through this one as well. Yeah, uh, if they're gonna end off the season with this arc, I mean, it's I mean, we still have season three, which they said it's also going to be yeah. 13 episodes. Um, I mean, it's possible they they might do a, a continuation of it, uh, in our yeah. opinion, but it's uh, it's hard it's hard to really tell on how much they're gonna really be adapting, you know, by the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that all being said, guys, until next time, we will see you all later.